Zilba joins me now from Tel Aviv. He's a fellow at uh, the Washington Institute for Near Policy, Near East Policy. Uh, Neri, explain, you know, the Israeli Prime Minister has uh, decided to withdraw his request uh, for immunity from prose prosecution just hours before Parliament was due to debate this request. Why and why now? Why today? So the process, this was expected, uh, not so much the withdrawal of Netanyahu's immunity request, but the fact that his immunity request would ultimately be rejected. Uh, Netanyahu does not have a majority in parliament. Uh, the procedure today was to form the committee that would actually debate uh, and then vote on whether, grant, whether to grant uh, the prime minister immunity. Uh, he knew that was a dead end, so the calculation, I think, was more political than legal uh, from his point of view which was to uh, withdraw it uh, at an early stage in the process and to hopefully have it go away in terms of it being a public issue uh, between now and Election Day, which is about five weeks away. And, and on that, with, with these elections coming up in uh, just five weeks, what next for him with regards to those corruption charges and those elections? So that's where that's the key question now. Uh, the Attorney General uh, here... Uh, had indicated that uh, after the immunity request uh, was either granted or rejected, uh, but likely rejected, he would then uh, file charges in Jerusalem District Court, and with that, uh, setting a date for the actual start of Netanyahu's trial. Uh, we have to remember these, these corruption investigations have been going on now for, for about three years. Uh, so this is essentially the end of the legal process uh, heading into trial. So now we're looking at when uh, the Attorney General will actually file the charges. And with that, uh, likely the start of a trial, uh, I don't expect it to happen before Election Day in early March, uh, but then afterwards, uh, that's when the trial will likely begin. And a uh, quick one for you, Neri, on, uh, on the deal of the century. Um, so um, Netanyahu is in Washington. Donald Trump is expected to announce uh, the details of his plan at 1700 GMT. Um, what do you make of the timing of that? peace plan today? Well, uh, it's likely not a coincidence. Uh, Trump had invited Netanyahu, along with Netanyahu's main rival here, Benny Gantz, to the White House uh, uh, today. So the Knesset procedure with regard to the immunity request was happening today. Uh, Trump's unveiling of the peace plan was happening today. Uh, it all combined seems to be uh, perhaps an orchestrated election gambit by the U.S. administration in coordination with Prime Minister Netanyahu to perhaps change the topic away from the immunity request and more towards what Netanyahu has called a historic opportunity uh, for Israel to perhaps receive more favorable terms than any future Israeli-Palestinian uh, resolution or, or deal. So that's uh, essentially how those two lines combine. Uh, it remains to be seen how, how big of an impact the unveiling of Trump's peace plan will have uh, politically in Israel and then obviously on the ground uh, in the West Bank vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians. Neri Zilba, pleasure to speak to you once again on TRT World.